Hey everybody, my name is Sam McGuire. We're going to be talking about GarageBand and how filmmakers can use it to create royalty-free music beds and music tracks. Now GarageBand is one of those interesting programs. It's only $15, so affordable, and it has quite a bit of content. It has a lot of power and a lot of limitations. We're going to be doing this in a number of different tutorials, exploring the different features. And in this very first one, we're going to look at how to open it up open up a movie project, import your movie, do some basic music with Apple Loops, export that, and bring those tracks into Final Cut Pro. Let's jump right in. Okay, so here we have the introductory screen for GarageBand. When we do this, we can simply come in, say New Project, and we have an option here, a template for movies. So whatever you've done, you've exported a movie file from Final Cut Pro. You can then simply double click this, give it a name. Let's put it in our file here. And we're going to call this movie import. This information here is actually quite important when dealing with music, but your very first time you can just leave this here and not worry about it. We can change this later as well, so you're not stuck with anything. So we're going to open this up, and now you can see we have our interface. So right off the bat, it opens up into our media browser and our movies. So if you're exporting things, you can actually export into your file folder. You can go to anywhere in your hard drive and pull things in. So it also, check this out, this is one of the things that I particularly enjoy about this, but it shows up here with Final Cut Pro projects and your media. So we can definitely pull things in. Now, unfortunately, we can't pull stuff straight off Final Cut Pro projects, but we can pull out some of our events. Okay, so now we can pull one of these in if we want to. Simply just drag it out here. And so now we're sharing movies with Final Cut Pro events, which is kind of cool. Creating thumbnails, doing a conversion, longer files. This would take quite a bit longer with, but we're going to be okay with this shorter one here. Now it's creating thumbnails. We're not able to do anything else while this is happening. This is definitely one of the things you're going to notice with things like Final Cut Pro. It has all those additional background rendering. Well, not so with iMovie and GarageBand. Okay, so once this is done, we're going to start pulling in some music tracks just as a bed for this. So we're going to come down here to where it says loops. This is our loop button. We can pull in media from this browser, and we have our overall inspector here as well for different things. Okay, so you can see we've imported the movie, and we have also have the sound from this movie which is non-existent there's nothing there so we could technically even come through and delete this track we don't even need it here so we can come through and delete track okay so let's pull in some loops apple loops are a little bit unique in terms of audio files because they have a number of different pieces of information attached to them they know how fast they are they know what key they're in they know what type, and they have all these different filter types you can actually go through and search very efficiently for different sounds and musical pieces. So one of the most powerful parts about GarageBand and Apple Loops are that they have all this functionality. So we're going to look at a little bit of that. Let's come in here and find some drums first. So let's actually just put some drums on. Now think about this. You don't necessarily need to know anything about this. Most of the work will be done for you. And then it'll just require some experimentation. So I pulled out our first loop. This is an instrument, a software instrument. This is not a recorded or an audio file. This is actually something that we can now tweak and do whatever we want with. When we go up to the top corner here, gives us the loop option, and I can drag this out for as long as I want. So that's very handy. 
We can also adjust things like volume and pan. So pan puts us in the left speaker or the right speaker. We're just gonna leave all this stuff as the default for now. We're just gonna really quickly get in here. Let's reset our filters and add something else. Let's go through and add a bass part. So we have a number of different bass parts here. Try this real quick. Loop it out. Now we can actually push play on this. We're not really being too particular about the style of music we're working on, although we are going to look at that at some point in a different tutorial because you have to realize that this particular program is good at certain styles of music and not as good at others. Let's come through here now and find a synth part and see if we can just drop it on and see how it sounds. So we're gonna come through here and look for something maybe electronic or Let's see what else we have here. Synth, let's just put a synth part on. This time we're not gonna put it just every single time. We're gonna actually spread them out a little bit. So we may need to turn on snap. I'm just gonna eyeball it for a second. Now, for those of you who have musical training and a musical background, you're gonna hear that those don't quite sound right. Well, they're not quite exactly in the right key, and this is one of the big limiting factors of this whole thing, is that it's really hard sometimes to match those. So what we need to do is actually come up here to our preferences, go to loops, and we need to make sure that we display original tempo and key so that we can match these better. So even if you don't understand all of this, the C means it's in the key of C, talks about uh, some of the white notes on the keyboard. And you're gonna find that it sounds a lot better when you match it with other things in the key of C. So again, real basic. I don't wanna make this too complicated for the very first time we're doing something, but at this point, with no musical training, what I recommend is actually going through and just finding something that you that sounds like what you like and go to different versions of it until it sounds right. So you just have to be listening until it sounds right. Again, a little bit off there, so let's find a different option. This one may just work for what we're looking for here. I'm holding down Option as I click and drag. That's a pretty standard Mac keyboard shortcut, which again works here. And I'm actually gonna pull another one in here to go in between these. Okay, so now we're really starting to cook here with this arrangement, and I haven't even done anything that requires any kind of musical talent except being able to listen and say, wow, I like that, or no, I don't like that. We can open up now our video. This is not going to have any real sync points on there. It's not going to match up. It's not going to have any timing issues. But we could, if we did have a video like that, start to really time this out and make it work with it. Okay, now that we're at this point, what we need to do is get this 
back into our full project as we continue to work on cutting the video. We can use this as a template now to cut the video, which is often what happens with documentary style projects or other type corporate projects. You'll have a music bed and then you'll cut the video to a finished track so that it all matches with the tempo. It's a lot easier to do that. And even if this is just a scratch track or not the final track, it could give you some good idea. And then when someone does compose a new piece, they'll just use similar tempos or the exact tempo. So what we're gonna do now, of course, is go to our share menu. And what we can do is send movie to iTunes or movie to disc. So let's come in here and send movie to iTunes. Name it all we want here. And in fact, for this, I like to keep the movie on here just like this because it's gonna give us a reference as we're pulling it in to make sure everything lines up just right. But I'm gonna do it the smallest possible, or even, doesn't matter, you can leave it on the iPod. Give it a name, something descriptive. Sam McGuire's playlist is not a good option because everything's gonna be in there if you don't do it. But, you know, make sure you give it the information you need to find it. We're gonna leave it like that for the moment. It's going to now create a mix down of this, quite quick because it's a short project actually going to compress the movie as well. So I don't want to actually sit here and wait for this whole thing, so I'm going to cancel this. And I want to show you the other option as well. And this is without a movie track, just doing it as an audio track. So in this case, the key is going to be to come through and actually just delete this track. Delete it. Let's share this now, and it'll send a song instead of that. So we want to actually do no compression on this. We want it to be full quality. There's two other preferences I want to look at to show you real quick. Inside here, when we actually share our instruments, we have a couple different options. We can auto-normalize, which means it'll pull it up in level, make it as loud without clipping as it can. I don't typically recommend this. Also, I want to make sure you put this on best quality for audio resolution. So those two things, turn off, normalize, and put it on the best. Now, if you find a lot of your projects are coming out too soft, by all means, turn this on, but always do the best audio resolution. So now let's share this. This will be actually much quicker without the video since we're not doing a big video convert on HD video. Exporting to iTunes. It'll bring it up in here. Okay, it's now in there. Let's load up Final Cut and show you where this pops up automatically. Okay, so if you're working on a project, we can come into Music, click on our overall menu structure here, go to iTunes Playlists. Now to show up here, Sam McGuire's Playlist. We can drag this out and use it in any project we want. So let's pull it out, move it over. We'll pull down the volume on this other track without deleting it. course we can pull it into the same cloud sequence I've got that over my event list as well but we can just pull it into any project now and we can keep a database of all the tracks we've created inside of our iTunes system okay so that's how we open up import a movie create a basic audio file using loops export it import it into Final Cut Pro the plan is to do a series of these on GarageBand because it's such a great tool very affordable and it's really something that filmmakers can use to do scratch tracks, to get something down for their composer, to get something so that they can edit to it, but also, in many cases, actually use it as the final music track in a number of different situations. So we're going to be covering a lot of topics, explaining the details of how to do it, 
We're going to get into a little bit of music theory as well so that anyone who's interested in that can learn more about it. But overall, we're just going to be exploring this from a number of different angles. If you have any questions or specific requests, email me at sam.mcguire at ucdenver.edu.